Hey there, in this video I'm going to talk you through how I took photographs of birds from my kitchen window. When I was thinking of ideas for this video, I was just going to film another video from my bird hide, which is a garden shed that I've converted, but I decided it would be more useful to focus this video at beginners to bird photography. People sometimes comment that they're envious of all the space that I've got here at my house, and I am very lucky to be able to have this shed set up permanently with perches and feeders so I can just come out and take photographs whenever I want and I realize that not everybody has got that facility so what I want to do in this video is show you how you can just take pictures from a window in your house and I'm going to try and do it at the most basic level that I can. So if you're new to photography or just want to get into taking photographs of birds then this video is for you so stay tuned and I'm going to help you to enjoy your photography. Now the first thing that we're going to do is situate the perches and the feeders near the kitchen window ready for taking photographs of the birds. Now you've got to give careful consideration to where the perches and the feeders go to give you the best chances of getting photographs of birds and to make the birds feel comfortable. Now here by my shed um, where I normally take the pictures I've sorted all that out right down to where the sun's going to be at different times during the day. So the sun comes up over there and goes round behind these perches so that the shed gets a really good view of the perches. Now I've got the feeders here, I've got some perches just here next to the feeders and then just over my right hand shoulder is a hedge so the birds can land in the hedge, pop over to the feeders and get back into the hedge and they feel really secure. So that's something to really give some careful consideration to. Now I've got the camera set up here with its back to the window that I'm going to be using to take the photographs of the birds. Now I've chosen this window for a specific reason. One, because this over here is where I'm going to position the feeders and behind it is the lawn which is going to give a very plain unobtrusive background. Now if you can't get a plain background in your shots one of the things that you can do is get yourself a screen or something some kind of backdrop. This is a plastic hedge simulation that I got from a garden centre that I use over by my bird shed um, and that gives me a really unobtrusive background but also I've positioned it here because it's very close to this hedge over here so the birds can land in this hedge, hop over to the feeder and then pop back into the hedge for safety. So this is where I'm going to position the feeder. I've got a garden hook that you can get from any garden center. That's just going to go into the ground. Um, so the feeder will sit above this small wall. So I've put the feeder onto the hook. Now it is worth bearing in mind that ideally this is actually positioned a little bit too low. It should be a bit higher to stop the birds being attacked by any predators when they land on the feeder. But because it's only going to be here for a short amount of time, it's okay for the moment because I'll be observing it whenever it's here. Now the next thing to do is to find some perches for the birds to land on. Now over the last few weeks we've had some storms that have caused a couple of trees to blow down. So you can see here I've got lots and lots of branches to choose from. But if you don't have these available you can just go on a walk to your local park or a woodland and you should find branches lying on the floor. Obviously don't take them off living trees but there are loads of dead branches lying about and just choose something that's fairly thin that won't become too dominant in the picture but something that's fairly attractive in its own right. Here is a branch that's got some potential but I can't actually use it as it stands at the moment because all of these extra little twigs here are going to make for a very distracting photograph. So what I'm going to do is find a branch that I can trim all the little twigs off and make it more photographically appealing. So this is a branch that I've found that I'm going to use. I've trimmed all the extra little twigs off so it's not as distracting. It's going to be quite long so there's lots of places for the birds to perch but I chose this branch particularly because of this right angle shape here and this will allow me to push it into the ground and allow the rest of the branch to be horizontal. So 
So what I've done is I've positioned the perches next to the feeder but left a small gap. So as a bird comes in to land and it lands on the branch, it can then hop over to the feeder before flying off. But once it's landed on the branch, I won't be able to see the feeder so it should look fairly natural. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of mixed seed and suet pellets down onto the wall because some birds prefer um, to feed off the ground rather than a feeder. And the larger variety of food that you can put out, the more species of birds you are likely to attract. So everything's now set up outside. All we need to do is pop inside to the kitchen and go and start taking some photographs. So I'm inside the kitchen now looking out towards the perches and I'm gonna have to take the photographs through the glass of the window. Now this is not an ideal situation um, because there's two panes of glass because it's double glazing. Now the reason for this is twofold. One, because these kitchen windows don't open very wide. That's about as far as they will open. So I can't actually get the camera through them and point them to where the perches are. And two, it's also pretty cold at the moment and so what what I get the benefit of is staying nice and warm inside the house um, and being able to take the photographs but it just means I'm going to be extra careful when it comes to focusing because I have got those extra couple of panes of glass in between me and where the birds are going to be. So because of these extra two panes of glass, I've got to make sure that they're really clean both inside and outside. So I'm going to give them a quick clean before I go any further. Bird photography does take lots of patience. You're going to be sitting, waiting for the birds to appear for quite a long period of time. So it is important that you make yourself really comfortable. Now just here, where the camera is on the top of the worktop, it's too low. For me to take photographs here, I would have to crouch down and it would be very uncomfortable over a long period of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the camera up to a much more usable height. Now if you've got a tripod you could use that but because I'm keeping this uh, video very simple what I've got just here are some kitchen towels so I'm going to use those to lift the camera up now to just give me a little bit more maneuverability what I've got is a bean bag that I use out in the hide now you don't need a bean bag you could just use a pillow or a cushion but what that does it just goes underneath the camera lens and it just provides a very sturdy base but it allows me to maneuver the camera so it's mobile all the time. Finally, thinking about comfort, firstly, I've got a stool to sit on, then I've put down a pillow on top of the worktop to protect my elbows so they don't get too painful when I'm hunched over the camera, and two, the worktop's fairly cold because it's made of granite. And the final thing, and probably the most important, is I've made myself a brew. The only bit of kit that I'm using this morning that is something that not every beginner would have is the lens on the front of my camera. Now this is a 200 to 500 millimeter lens and it really helps you make the bird bigger in the frame. Now if you're thinking about bird photography, it's not impossible to get shots with shorter focal lengths, but the longer the lens that you've got on the front of the camera, the bigger you can make that bird in the frame and also you don't need the birds as close to where you're sitting so you can take them from further away. If you are interested in finding out more about wildlife lenses I'll put a link just up here to a video that I made specifically about this topic. So it's not taken very long at all for the birds to start to use the feeders. I've only been sat here for about five minutes and already I've started to see birds appearing. Now the longer that you can keep a feeder in place the more the birds will get used to it and the more variety of species that you'll start to attract. I quite often get questions asking me what settings I need the camera on to take photographs of birds. Now this isn't a question with an easy answer because it very much depends on the lighting conditions on the day. Now today is a very overcast day so it's going to be quite challenging to take the photographs because the light is quite low. 
Now, what I want to do is try and get the shutter speed as high as possible. Um, that will freeze any action. Also, I want a wide aperture to make the depth of field quite shallow. This will throw the background out of focus. Now that's okay because a wide aperture will let more light in, but I'm probably still going to have to turn up the ISO to make sure that I get enough light into the camera. Now, if you want to find out more about depth of field when taking photographs of birds, I've also made a video on that, so you can go and check that out. Link's just up here. But what I also do is set the camera on aperture priority. And what this means is I tell the camera that I want the aperture set at 5.6, and then it will change the exposure if the lighting conditions change by changing the shutter speed. Now I do need to keep an eye on that because if the shutter speed drops too low, then I will need to turn the ISO up a little bit higher to make sure I've got a fast enough shutter speed. Everything's in place now. I've talked you through my setup and the settings in the camera. So all that's left now is a little bit of patience and just to sit here and enjoy the photography. So I'm really excited about that. I've just seen a pair of siskins, a male and a female. Now the reason that's particularly exciting is because I haven't seen any siskins here at my house for at least five years. So this is the first um, couple of siskins that I've seen for quite a while. They're a really attractive bird, especially the male because it's very bright yellow in places. Um, so whether that's because of the new position of the feeders or just because they've started to visit the um, area again I don't really know but I'm really excited to see them now I didn't get a brilliant shot I did manage to get one because the lighting conditions were very low and so the shutter speed at the time wasn't fast enough but hopefully they'll visit again Now I am very lucky living out in the countryside. I've just had a couple of male pheasants wandering through the back paddock. So I've managed to get some shots of those. And I also had a jay land just on our washing prop, just over there. And I got a shot of that as well. So if you are new to photography or have been inspired to have a go at taking photographs of birds, I hope that this video has shown you that it's not actually out of reach. You just need a few bits of basic equipment, a kitchen window and a little bit of space outside and everyone can take photographs of birds. All you need is a little bit of patience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with some of the best shots from this morning. Well, I've been really quite shocked with the variety of birds that I've been able to see from my kitchen window. Now, albeit that the quality of the shots aren't quite as good as I might have expected from somewhere else because I've been taking through two panes of extra glass, the shots are still pretty good. And I think if I'd have just been beginning photography, I would have been really, really pleased with them. I've seen couple of different species that I don't normally see. I've seen the siskins and I've seen the jay. So that's been absolutely brilliant. And it's just given me a different perspective on my photography. 
Well, I hope you found that video enjoyable, and if you're new to bird photography, I hope those tips have been useful. If they have been, let me know down below in the comments, or nip over to my Instagram account, that's at the Oakton Photography. There you can leave me your comments, and you can also see some of my bird photographs. If you like what I do on the channel, you can support me by visiting my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer, so go over there and check that out. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe, and the bell notifications, because that really helps me out, and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any of my future content. Watch out for next week's video. That goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, go and check out this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, keep photographing, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.